Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to carry on with our Swift UI um, state and data flow and um, concepts. But in today's video, we're actually going to look at observable objects and the app publish property wrapper. So we're going to break down what they both are and how we can use them in Swift UI. So let's get straight into it. So we discussed source of truth in the last video, which you probably want to check out, breaking down Swift UI state and data flow and also state in Swift UI. And this is where our view has a source of truth that it reads, writes, and reacts to causing its local state to change. But sometimes we may want to manage our own source of truth, which can be accessed by other views. We can isolate code into its own object and easily unit test any kind of code um, or business logic. So in these cases, using something like a state property may not meet our requirements. So let's look at an example of this in code. So here we have an example where we simulate fetching data from a resource and printing the number of items that are currently in the array. So if you look on our screen here, we have a state property here called people, which is where we hold our people. And we also have another state property here called is loading, where we check to see if the view is loading or not. But in our VStack, we check to see if it's loading. And depending on whether it is loading, we show a progress view, or we show some text telling us how many people are in our array and we also have a button here with an inline function to actually fetch simulate fetching these people and within our function fetch people we set whether it's loading is equal to true and we then set our people array and then we set is loading to false because it's finished loading so let's actually see this in action so if i actually tap this button now we can see our loading and it tells us how many users it's managed to get. Now, this is just a hard coded array, so it's not actually working with an actual API, but you can, it's simulating how it would work. So the main problem that we have here is, what about if we actually wanted to use this logic fetch people on a different screen? Well, we can't actually extract this logic out because it's actually bound to this content view here. So how can we actually improve this and actually, you know, build our own source of truth that we can pass around between different views? Well, we can do this by using an observable object. So let's create a new view model file to separate out our logic. So I'm just going to go here and just say new file. And then this time we don't want this to be a Swift UI view. We just want this to be a Swift file. And then we're going to call this people view model. Cool. And then within here, we're going to create a new class and then we'll just break this down. So the whole purpose of this class that we're going to, that we just created is to manage the people that we receive from our fake API and then return them to our view as well as return the current state that is simulating our fake network request. So when we actually break this down, this class, we wrote final here because we don't actually want any other classes to be able to subclass it. So then we mark our class with the observable object protocol. So there's two things here. Why did we not actually use, why do we use a class and we didn't use a struct? Well, with classes, they're actually reference types. So they're not actually the same as structs. So with classes, when you actually change a property within them, it updates the same reference to that class and doesn't create a new copy of it like it would with a struct. It just simply updates the object, which then reflects the new change. So this is why we want to use a class instead of being able to, instead of using a struct, because we just want to simply update references to an object. Now we have the observable protocol here. Now we have the observable object protocol here so that our Swift UI views can use this as a source of truth. So what do I mean by this? Well, remember, Swift UI views are not the same as reference types. They're actual val actually value types. So when you're working with data, you need some kind of storage for your source of truth so that your views can reference this. And that's what this protocol allows you to do. So this here allows us to actually use this class as a source of truth that will actually get stored in memory for our Swift UI views to be able to read and write to as well. So it's really important that when you're creating your own source of truth, for Swift UI views, you mark your views with the observable object property wrapper. So before we actually discuss publishers, I actually go into a lot of detail about them in one of my previous videos, getting started with Combine, which discusses the Combine framework. So now that we have a place of storage for our views, we actually need to give them a way to read and write and react to changes. So we can do this by using the app published property wrapper. 
So in our case, we want our view to read and react to changes from our people array and also as to whether the content we're fetching is loading or not. So let's add this in now. So let's just break this down. So now rather than us using state within our class, we're now using the app publish, which allows us to tell our Swift UI view that this is a property that it can actually change and read write and react to and you'll also notice as well that we've actually not marked them as private and this is because we want our views to actually have the possibility to read and to write to them so they can force cause that change but if we didn't want our views to have access to a property then you probably don't want to mark that property as published and you probably want to close it off by using the private um you know access control so similar to state these are our source of truths so the publish property wrapper gives us the ability to create the storage for our Swift UI views to read from and update and react to whenever changes are made to them. So the next step we need to make is actually to update our view model and add the function to simulate fetching users. So let's do this now. So essentially this function is the exact same function that we had in our content view. So now we have a function that is specifically belonging to this view model. What we need to do now is actually use this view model within our view so that it's able to read and react to the changes that we make within our fetch people function. So in this case, in order to use it, we actually want to use the at state object property wrapper when we create our class. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about it in this video, but we will in an upcoming video about state object. So let's add this into our view. So if we just delete the at state here because we don't need that anymore because we've now moved that into our our source of truth which is our people view model and now let's actually type out and create an instance of our people view model so that our view can read from it and it's our new source of truth we've now created an instance of it here so this is our new source of truth for this view and you'll notice that we actually have quite a few errors on the screen so let's fix this now because we moved our fetch people function outside of this view and into this view model we can actually delete this extension here because we don't need it and then finally within our view wherever we reference those properties that we had before we can now just use it directly from our view model so let's update this now here okay cool so now you notice that all our errors have gone away and something interesting to note, well, two things is when I actually declared my view model, I just created an instance of the people view model like so. But there is an alternative way of writing this if you prefer it. So rather than you write it like this, you could actually just specify the type of it afterwards and then just say dot in it. And that will create an instance of it. So this is just syntactic sugar depending on how you prefer to create your objects. Now, me personally, I prefer to do it like this. And also as well, when we're actually accessing the property from our view models, you'll notice that we're not actually using the dollar symbol before our view model because we're not actually binding any of these instances to a view. We're just checking to see if the value has changed, then react to it. So either show this view or change this view's local state. And you'll see here that within our button, we're actually accessing the function by saying, you know, call this function within our state of truth. And by calling this function, it causes our views local UI state to change, re-render and, you know, show its new local state. So now we actually have a class where which we can isolate and create our own custom source of truth we can use to manage fetching our users and we can easily test this in the future if we wanted to, which we'll cover in future videos. So what I'm going to do now is actually just run this on the simulator and just show you that it's working like it did before. So we call, if we just tap on this button here, you'll see that it's fetching those users and it tells us that we managed to get four users. So it literally functions the exact same. So that's everything from me. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up by hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a brand new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.